Welcome back to Panasonic Live at EFA 2012. This is Patrice Boudibida, and in my hand I have a tablet PC with all your questions concerning, right now, Lumix. And therefore I have my expert, Mark, with me. Hi, Patrice. Welcome back Good to, to the you program. Again. Hi. Good to see you. You had, you had some time just to enjoy the EFA a bit? Yeah, we have. We had a good look around, but it's really, really busy here today, which is really, really good. So, it was quite comfortable uh, yesterday. Yeah, a little bit busy, <laughs> Yeah, which is great. So we've had uh, a lot of questions to answer and uh, had some really good fun. So good. All right. Good day. So I'm really looking forward to all the questions concerning like Lumix. It's a little bit different than when it comes to home appliance. I mean, I feel like being an expert now when it comes to fridges and, and, and washing machines. Do you want me to test you? <laughs> Later on. <laughs> but first, let's see how much is left of uh, all the expertise that I gained over here. So let's start right away with the first okay, question coming go. from Evan B. What exactly is mirrorless photography? Is it like digital SLR photography? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, mirrorless photography is um, the same, if not better quality, than certain uh, digital SLR cameras out there. Uh, and the reason for that is, is, is around the use of the sensor and the, the compactness. <laughs> you don't look like you're going to agree no, I'm with just, me. Yeah, because <laughs> saying like if it's better, is it really of matter if it's better or better not? Better quality of uh, imagery. And, and I mean, it's not here to replace uh, digital SLRs overnight or anything like that. Not at all. It's here to. It's a, it's a different technique a, in, in, in absolutely in general. And, and, and in and in the mirrorless terms, it's very competitive. It's very very uh, high resolution. Um, and really easy to use. So anybody of any uh, 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 quali qualifications or no qualifications in, in photography, uh, somebody that's coming into uh, photography for the first time, it's for everybody to use. Now, what, I what I like to say by, uh, about this topic by now is that apparently technique has had its own development. And back then when you started with uh, DSLRs, of course, you didn't have the chance just to have a little screen where you would have like live view on it, for example. And I think taking advantage of these latest technologies uh, was one of the reasons why you came up with mirrorless technology because yeah. one of the biggest benefits of it is definitely uh, the size of uh, the body has amazingly uh, been shrunk to, I don't know, like, can you say how much percent? Well, look, I, I can show you. I mean, look at this this camera here. This is the uh, mirrorless uh, GF5. Now, it's a very, very small body, uh, almost the size of a compact camera. Right. Um, but as you can see, it's interchangeable lenses. So I can take the actual lens off. And again, the size and the actual um, overall uh, body of it is remarkably, probably four times smaller than a, a, a digital SLR equivalent. But specifically, this, uh, this model doesn't come with a viewfinder. Uh, you have to check um, everything on the live view screen. That's absolutely back. right. This is uh, specifically for um, a market, maybe a, a customer that's uh, coming out of a compact camera, yeah. uh, that's looking to have a, a camera that's got interchangeable lenses like Improve this Improve also. Yeah, but also then take out of the compact element the ease of use. So we have on the camera here, like all of our cameras, uh, the intelligent auto button. So if I press that button there, that will illuminate blue. What that will do is actually basically everything for me. Portraiture, macro, landscapes. Um, it will calculate the resolution, the contrast, uh, all in one go. Mm. So the customer doesn't have to worry about light settings, um, different uh, subject matters. It calculates that for you. At the same time then, if the customer wants to be more creative and have the manual use that maybe some of the compacts uh, that our sales and competitors sell that don't have, they can turn off the intelligent auto itself and then control the camera manually. So it still is a camera? Just yeah, to absolutely. answer that question by absolutely. Adam B then. So uh, thank you for this question and uh, we shall continue with the next one. As this one comes from Andreas Yukis, yes. Which cameras are capable of shooting photos in RAW and JPEG formats at the same time? Because this is a mode that not every camera is supporting. No, you're absolutely right. Some are offering you to have the uncompressed uh, data file, the RAW, yep. or the, the, uh, the compressed one, the JPEG. So it happens sometimes that some cameras offer you the chance to, ha to take two pictures at the same time. Yes, that's like absolutely right. RAW, which, needs to, which can be modified later on, much far easier than, than a JPEG uh, uh, picture. But is it which camera does support that here from from Lumix? Okay, so um, if we come over to the booth here, we yeah. have uh, what we were discussing yesterday, the G5. Yes. So our brand new uh, Lumix G5. I'll just switch this on here. 
But before I go into any demonstration on here, basically the answer to the question is, the LX7 is the highest compact we, we range. Yes, and that shoots, of which I'm still a big which, fan already. You showed your excitement yesterday, which yes. we're going to cover a lot of that tomorrow. But because the LX5 was awesome, that's oh, why. Absolutely, yeah. uh, an, amazing, an amazing piece of kit. That will shoot in RAW and that will shoot in JPEG. So that's the only compact that we sell that will shoot in RAW. It's the entry level then to the rest of the cameras that shoot both, as you, your, uh, the person's just said, in uh, JPEG and RAW, but in different levels as well. So what we yeah, can do... I'm never, I'm never sure what I'm really going to do afterwards with the picture. That's why that's one of the benefits of having the two standards at the same time. Yeah, and of course you mentioned editing. So if you shoot in JPEG, it's obviously a little bit more difficult to edit than, than full RAW. But yeah, but also but it's very important just to, to, to make people understand what it's really about, because otherwise it's like, oh, I need to be, uh, also, I'm also going to be, uh, uh, I have to do the same thing as professionals. It's not, ne it's not really necessary yeah. just to do it the way that um, Andreas is asking for it. It's really a matter of what is it that you want to do with the pictures later on. If you are a professional photographer, you just want to work uh, with the pictures afterwards, with the uh, with the data, then it's better to have uncompressed data so there's so much more to do with it than just simply with the JPEG. But when it comes just to have a vacation, just to take a few pictures of the family, friends, and all whatsoever, trust me, the JPEG quality should be more than sufficient for, yes. that, for these matters. You're absolutely right. Everyday use, um, out and about, you know, holidays, everyday fun, JPEG is more than enough to, 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 to use. You're absolutely yes. right. And I can show you very, very quickly on here, uh, if we go into the um, quick menu, and if I just move across. Also, I don't really consider that as really easy because these experts still have to switch like from model to model, so I understand it's always going to take we go. a few as you, seconds to adapt. As you can see, we can shoot in RAW, we can shoot in uh, a lower compressed RAW file, both, as you, uh, Andreas, I think uh, uh, we're identifying, is both in RAW and JPEG yes. and full JPEG as well. Yeah. But don't not forgetting that RAW obviously takes up a lot more memory and it is far uh, more yeah, yeah, up to yeah. like what's the conversion? Well, it depends on the quality of the. It, it does, but I think you know for everyday user that's coming into either of these cameras, so it's both the GF5 and the G5, the G3, the GX1. You can shoot in all those formats. Okay. Uh, any compact such as the TZ30. Uh, downwards will only shoot in um, JPEG. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Th that's for the models, and I think like the, the conversion rate. It's not, it's not a rate, but I think when when like a nicely done JPEG should take about like two up to four megabytes. Yeah, possibly. Like again, walking yes. up goes yes. up to like 40, 60, depending of course like how many megapixels uh, you, you're shooting with. So Andres, this is your answer. Thank you for that question once again. And now again a question. Uh, oh in burst mode. Andrews, okay. is, yeah. he's an enthusiast. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, he's an enthusiast because Andrews, again, would like yeah. to know this time, is it possible to shoot raw files in burst mode? If yes, how many frames per second? That's what FPS okay. uh, stands uh, for. Let's take the G5, for example. As we've identified, we can shoot in various formats, raw and JPEG. Yes. In it has a 16 megapixel sensor, so it's very high uh, resolution. So you're going to get some really, really fantastic sharp shots. You can actually shoot at six frames a second. So every second you get six frames. Talking about the that's uh, in JPEG G G5. That's the G5. Okay. And the reason for that is obviously if you are out and about and you're capturing uh, something fast moving, you're going to be able to get that absolute pinpoint shot out of one of those six photographs. Um, in RAW, of course, the files are a lot larger. You can actually, it's actually a lot lower than that. So it's roughly about three, 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 three point seven, I think it is, in uh, in 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 RAW for frames per second. But it differs from camera to camera. In general. Yes, it does, and this is just an example for the G5. For so the G5. it will, based on the processor and the camera. Yes, okay. that's right. But you just also like mentioned just like one way of using the burst, as you just said, just like being lucky enough just to have out of these five yeah. the, the perfect shot. Or nowadays, if you want to do some more creative work when it comes to animation, you can some stop motion-esque yes, type yeah. of looks that what you can create you, with the burst. You can, well. and you, you can also do the opposite, which is just what you're saying. So right. you have a waterfall, and you want to capture the flowing movement. You, you've, you've probably seen professional photo photographs where you've got the, the, the stream running and it's, it's really quite creative. Right. Then, you know, obviously one of those shots is going to, you know, kind of, you can open, uh, lower the shutter speed to get that. Exactly, because sometimes well. it just happens that yeah. you're just like taking a shot of someone who's just looking down and then yeah. in the very next second he's looking up 
So just having adding the two, I yeah. mean, for for uh, animation, this is a great thing. Having the very same shot, but just like with the eyes, yes. the eyelid getting yes. uh, open, it's a quite a nice yeah. effect that you can start on the creative level when it comes to working with the camera. But Andreas, this has been your answer. With an extra comment by me, then. Uh, next one coming from Gareth. What is the best camera for sports and landscape photography for a cyclist, uh, e i.e. those of who travel most places? I.e. Uh, abbreviation. For so, example, yeah. Uh, so, can you just read that again? So, what is the best camera for sports and photography? So, we need something that is fast okay, when it comes right, to sports. Right, okay. Well, I can recommend a couple of cameras here. Uh, we have the FT4, which is a, an outdoor active camera. Um, this has a, 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 a small zoom. It has full high definition video, but it, it also has GPS, it has an altimeter, it has a barometer, it has a compass. So all of a sudden this camera here doesn't, is not so a camera anymore. So it's a Swiss anymore. knife, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, without obviously the blades. Oh, yeah. um, in a compact body, a very high quality lens and full high definition video. It also does 3D. So if you but, have what it, but what does it mean, like having GPS? Before we, we start yeah, with sure, 3D, but what, what, what's, the, what's the matter of having GPS in a camera? I mean, it's not a navigation system, isn't it? Well, it, it's not like a sat-nav on a car. It's not going to actually uh, guide you to where you're going. So if you're on holiday and you want to actually pinpoint where you are, of course, in your mind you know where you are, but if right. you're going to be using uh, mapping software or social networking or uh, uh, you know, software maps online, then it will actually track, uh, pinpoint where you're at and embed that into the actual uh, image itself. And specifically for someone who's traveling a lot, it's quite an advantage because m maybe yeah. you might not remember where you took that shot just Absolutely. by looking. I mean, some That's programs, right. as for example, iPhoto is offering the, uh, the, the chance just to sort pictures by the destination or yeah. uh, by, the, by, the, uh, by, by the place where they got shot, which I think makes it also easier just to uh, have an overview of all the pictures. Yeah, absolutely. But on top of that, we also have our very uh, famous award-winning TZ series, which is the TZ30, uh, current range at the moment. Yep. Now, the reason that why that sits above the FT4 is it has a higher sensor, so you've got better output of picture resolution, faster transfer of data, brighter lens. It also has things like GPS and 3D, but like uh, Gareth was saying, if he's cycling um, and he wants to capture those slow or fast action shots, then the TZ would actually capture it a lot faster than, say, the FT4. But it doesn't really say what kind of sports he's willing to do. Uh, when it comes, I mean, this one is waterproof, so let's say like That's waterproof, absolutely right. I mean, so this is all weather, if it's raining, it's splash proof, and it will go down to 12 meters underwater, so 40 feet. So, so. TZ30, that would be your... Uh, that pick for, yes, I would say TZ30 TZ for the other features, it's also got a, a 20 times optical zoom, whereas this has got uh, a 3.8 uh, times optical zoom. And you can imagine trying to fit in a, a 20 times zoom in here would be virtually impossible. Um, hence why we have the, the TZ30. Okay, so you can say the TZ is something like what the tough book is to the laptops, this Spot is on. to Lumix. Yeah, good, good example. I see. So thank you, Gareth, for your question. Uh, Guido Di Marcantonio, what is the maximum resolution that now exists? I would say like within the uh, Panasonic uh, camera range. That's a uh, range. very good question. Um, currently, the highest output sensor we have is uh, the GH2, uh, closely followed by the G G5. The GH2 is still like the, it's, it's, the highest it's resolution? It's just slightly ahead. Uh, the, the G5 is 16.01 uh, megapixel. No, just look Sorry, around. I thought, did you see somebody you recognized? No, I didn't. <laughs> no. Correct. Yeah, so, uh, but like we uh, kind of discussed yesterday, the GH2, uh, specifically for uh, its video output, it, it, you know, obviously that high sensor output really works well together, so you're going to get really high quality video. But again, the G5 follows very closely behind. So uh, at okay. the moment, that's the highest megapixel uh, sensor that we've got on our cameras. Okay, that, that's, that's so much for, for that, that question in specific. Um, but in general, you have to say it's not a matter of how many megapixels you do have when it comes to a perfect picture. I mean, it's also a common belief that a lot of, pic a lot of people think like the more pixels you get, the yeah. better picture there is. This is not a common rule. It's not, it's not. And uh, if we were, for example, going to print, say, this size that yeah. we have behind us, the mirrorless uh, 
the graphic, then you'd be looking at the highest megapixel, say something around 16, to get absolute pinpoint accuracy. Yep. Uh, if we're doing, say, six by, six by four prints or 10 by seven, very small f f home photographs that you put in your frames that you cherish your moments together with, then at, you know, two million pixels upwards is far and is, is, it, is it, you know enough for that. Okay. What our cameras do do uh, now is that they will actually explain when you change the size of the actual output of the, what you want to record in, it will actually tell you what the best prints are for that size. So the intelligent side of the camera will say, well, if you're going to print this size, you'll need 16. If you want the standard size, then it will be uh, two million um, or, or a little bit more. Okay. So very easy to use. And uh, Guido, your question has been already uh, replied. Thank you for this question. Uh, we continue with Dave. What about the built-in wireless function? Can I directly transfer pictures to my notebook? Uh, you can. Good question, because so yes, far we just yes, expected it yes. to be work on tablets or on smartphones. What I have here is our brand new SZ5. Now, I don't know if you can. Uh, sure, right. you can hold that. If you point that to so you me, can, you can, yeah, you can show like the display of. So I have a, a, a smartphone here. This is a, a iOS Apple device. And via download through Apple and Android, this is available for an Android uh, device as well. What Patrice is doing here is uh, he's moving the camera around, and I actually have a remote control of the camera with, with this device. Now, what's quite cool about this is I can actually control the zoom, so I'm now going to move the zoom uh, forward. Let's see if that goes there. Oh, it looks like it's recognized just so pretty, Patrice. It's, oh, uh, it's, oh, there we go. It's frozen. I'm going to pass so, the here we go. to my mother. Here we go. I'm actually going to zoom in. We won't zoom in too far. I never looked as good as right now. And we're going to zoom <laughs> <laughs> right back out again. Can you see the yellow box around your face? Yes. Well, that's picking up face detection. So if I take the photograph now. How many points does he have? Just a well, we're question do, from yesterday. I think this will be in 10 million pixels, which is the output of the camera. So I'm going to actually take a photograph of Patrice with the phone. There we go. So that will save in, it's great, isn't it? It's great. That will really save in the camera, and it will save onto the device. So if I now want to play that back, and this is going to answer the question. Oh, wait, so I think it's like what we could do is I actually take a. Both of us? Did you switch it off? No, I can go back. Yeah. So uh, let's change to recording mode. So let's say we want to take there a picture go. of the two of us. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so. And then we, we know can, exactly. We come over here. OK, over here. here. There we go. So great. Uh, there we go. After three, uh, cheese, or one, two, three. There we go. I love it. Fantastic. I now, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang okay. on. Do you know what we can do now, which answers Dave's question, yeah. is that I can now send this or save it directly to my PC, or if I go into playback mode. Exactly. That, that will be my question. Where did we save that picture? Was it saved? It's saved the in the cam camera. Okay. It'll save directly to the PC. Okay. It'll save in, obviously, the device here. But what I can do is if I now put my finger on the actual photograph, as long as you have social networking sites installed on your phone, I can send it directly to a cloud service called uh, Lumix Club, uh, which saves a photograph for 30 days, and that's up to 1,000 photographs. Or I can send it directly to um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and edit it uh, either on the phone and send directly uh, to the to my, through my wireless network. But is it that, that, uh, that I first of all, I have to, now that I took the picture, is it after when I want to work through it through Instagram, use a filter or anything like that? Um, do I have to first of all like to download that picture from the camera into my phone, or is it already no, on the it's phone? It's already on the phone. So I send it directly. It saves in your photo album on yeah. the phone, and then you send it to the application. You're amazed, aren't you? It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's very good. Um, you can edit the photograph as you normally would if you took it with your camera phone. Yes. Except that this is like 10 megapixel and also a uh, high quality with flash 10 megapixel. It's got uh, 720, uh, so hi HD recording. It's obviously got a premium feel to it. Uh, it's a very good, st and it's got all that technology that we've crammed into all our high end cameras as well. So intelligent auto face uh, recognition. So face does the detection. app only work with iOS or? No, Android devices as well. So any tablet, smart device that you have, you can actually do that. The DMC SZ. Five. SZ5. And the Thank uh, you. <laughs> no, sorry. No, I, I, oh, it's over here. And sorry. Do you wonder why that photograph is really high resolution? What, what, why do you think it's so, such a good picture? 
Um, well, if, if I would be uh, on, have a with a big head, it would be it's because of me. But well, other than you. yourself. It, okay. well, it, it's the lens. So we have uh, a Leica uh, El Marit, uh, sorry, Elmar lens on here, uh, which obviously um, some uh, smartphone devices don't have, uh, don't have uh, a Leica lens. So you've got a really high quality picture uh, sent directly to the device to, uh, to somewhere in the, in the ether of the network around the globe. You, cool. you don't want to know what I'm already thinking about <laughs> what, you can, what you can do with that camera right now. So I think the answer to the question is yes, we, yes. we can send that to the, to the device. So thank you, Dave, for that question and uh, also for my wish list that has been expanded right now. Gemma, I would like to know what different digital effects are there? Okay, great. Well, this is a really good demo to show Is there everybody. a kind of a stand-up variety of uh, effects of the company? I mean, sepia was always quite popular, yep. black and white. Yep. And as you know, with professional photographers, they tend to use filters, so filters to create different atmospheres and different uh, creative uh, effects. Well, they used to, it used to be the way that they've been using filters. Nowadays, it's application that Well, uh, we know, don't we? Uh, yeah. We just identified a couple that you can do that on all different devices. Well, now you can actually do even more on our uh, Lumix cameras. On, on this alone, the G5, there are 23 different scene modes. So if I switch this on here for you, Okay, and I actually select on the top here the scene uh, mode dial, which says C, uh, SCN. Oh, I already see it. Okay, Give, can you oh, see it that? Gives you, yeah, it gives you... So what it does this uh, on, on the G5, and as, actually the GF5, is it gives you a diagram of what potentially you could do on the camera. So we won't go through all of them, but here it's on this number... This will be like a macro shot of the flowers? Well, this one is soft image of a flower. So if you yeah. want a really soft focus image, you can select that. Let me uh, find one that's quite uh, an effective. Now, I can actually... You're probably familiar with the flicking on your smart devices. I can actually move that across. It tells me glittering illumination. So let, let's select that. So I'm going to... Before I do that, I'm yeah, going to press... That makes sense, especially with all the lights that yeah. we have there at the... Well, it's uh, bright. It's, yeah. you know, a really blue tinge to where, where we are here now. What it actually does, it gives you the customer... Um, advice on, on how to do this. So it will actually say, when you press information, it will say, this is what it does. So this effect gives you a uh, pinpoints of light. So it enhances the light. If I then move, press the arrow key down, it tells me that it will um, uh, work best on close-up. Okay. So if I move down, it then gives me an advanced question, which you may actually tell me uh, what kind of lens to use or what kind of exposure to use. So yeah. before you actually get involved with it, it's, it's really giving you a, a good a bit of advice on the how to take the photograph. So if we then set that, I don't know if you can actually see it, but if I just focus on there, can you see the sparkle effect? Yeah. On there. Yeah, Hopefully the camera right will pick that up. There. Yeah. But what I can now do, if I press the button on the right hand side, I can actually enhance those. Uh, we, you can actually enhance the, the star uh, uh, kind of effect as right. well. Uh, but if I come back out of that again and I go into the menu button and back, and again, like I said yesterday, it's touch screen, I can then go back and do other effects. There we go that famous scene that you normally see at night with the, the flashing cars. It'll actually guide you through it. But so it you definitely, can actually this is going to take a tripod then. Uh, well, the, the, the image stabilizer in the camera can help you, but for that, like you're the absolutely fares, right. It's going to take, that was yeah. at least yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and, and these, aren't, these, aren't, camera these aren't my photographs, by right. the way, but uh, yeah. But so any end user, any no, uh, customer but I'm, can what use I'm, that. What I'm trying to avoid is that sometimes when you make announcement about some specific technologies, uh, people sometimes have the tendency just to forget the, the common sense. So that's why, that's why I keep, like, I love to repeat the fact that even though that you have a lot of help, it's not an excuse f just to use your own creativity. This is a tool that you're supposed to use and uh, don't, uh, don't no, rely right. on to anything just to make it perfect. It's still your eye that counts. And uh, apparently we're having a lot of fun with this camera. We are, so. and, and, and that's a key word there, Patrice. Um, and it also has uh, 16 other filters as well, which we can cover on uh, a little bit later, So, okay. uh, as well as the 23C mode. But in general, can you share, like, is there a certain amount of how many effects at least every single camera on, has? On each, in each camera, you've got at least about 10, 10 C modes. So around 10 to uh, answer your question. And here we have a poll in between when we like to ask you questions like, when I take pictures, I'm the sort of person who either wants to take quick snaps or second choice, likes using creative modes, as we just uh, mentioned them, or fine-tunes images manually afterwards. These are the three options. It's going to be interesting what comes up 
uh, out of it. And apparently, we just have creative people amongst us because 64% uh, um, they're taking pictures to fine tune images manually afterwards. So thank you for the participation. And once again, thank you for the last question concerning the filters and effects. So now here comes the great <laughs> moment where I just hope to well, continue and then it's frozen. I can carry on just talking about the 16 other uh, creative effects that we've got on here. And one you I want really to talk about all of them? No, 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 not oh everyone. Yeah. But there's one on here. Now, have you ever seen that photograph, Patrice, where you've got a picture of a flower and the whole of the background is black and white, but the flower is the color of the flower? So it's one color. But usually you do, you do that with applications afterwards. You do. Are you telling me there's a chance to do that already like in the camera? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to select the one touch color. So one point color here, for example. Again, it's got the, you can find out how to actually use it, which we showed out earlier. So I'm going to set that. Okay. And then I'm going to bring up the little palette here that gives me an ink pen. Okay. Okay. So the ink pen, if I select that along the top, well, now I can select anywhere in here a color. So it will pick out a pinpoint pixel of uh, a color. Now, I'm not going to choose blue because I'm white because it's obviously quite dominant here. So what I'm going to do very quickly is choose a color, say orange. OK. okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point on orange. Yeah. And I'm going to say set. So basically now, if you look around, everything that is orange you got to be orange. kidding. And everything that is not is black and white. I have to set that by p uh, pressing the, the, sc the screen. Yeah. So I select the color I want. It's, it, it blocks everything else out. Okay. And then it becomes one color. So no okay. editing after, no editing uh, at a future. Well, you could edit it at a future. I think I'm looking for blue, but to. of course I want to see blue because it's eliminated. No, but if, if I just want to go back, what should I do? I cleared? I I yeah. cleared. So if you uh, go back into the menu section, oh. which is the middle middle dial. This one here? That's right. Yep. yep. Press it again. I press it again. OK, uh, sorry, if you press. Oh, sorry. Dish, that's right. So press the little pallet that's on here? that this little pallet there next to the, if I do it for you. Let's put it down yeah, yeah, on sure. here. I just want to so that we can see show how easy it is for myself. So press the pallet there. Ah, oh, there it is, because there are two of them. Yep. Oh. Uh, you've got big fingers. I do. Hey. Let's just depress that again. OK. There we go. There we go. So That's why he's the expert <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> if you press the pin at the top, the, uh, the, the, pin drop, on the, top. the, the uh, ink pen, sorry. Yeah. As I did. Now, it, it now goes back to the color. OK, uh, now I want to go. Full color. Exactly. So now I want to have everything that is, OK, you said dominant, is that like blue? That's so, what's going to be. Yeah, so let's choose. Well, look, focus on the green on that leaflet. So if you now point to the green. Oh, it doesn't need to be sharp. There we go. Oh, you didn't? I'll try that. So it's still picked out on. No, you took the gray. You took the gray. Yeah, we need something a little bit bigger. Bigger than that. Yeah. Should I reset? Uh, you can reset it. That's right. Sorry, but it's like right now it's like he's, really too he's much. very keen about this. He, I think, I think get some red. He's got that on his shopping list. I think uh, for Christmas. Yeah, I picked it. You got Great. it. Yeah. Okay. Now press set. Set. And if you show the camera now, you, everything that you've selected red, is now red. Or every, every pigment, skin tone, uh, posters, r graphics, except my face, red. Your face. Yeah. The G of the Lumix. Yeah. It's amazing. I love it. I love that feature. You can do that in that camera, the G5, and the GF5, the smaller, compact, uh, mirrorless camera that we showed earlier. But can I uh, store that as a preset? Let's say like yes. I want to shoot a movie, and I just want to have a specific look. So I'm just going to have one color. and. This color you can only. shoot that and save to SD card, and if you wanted to, to edit the photograph afterwards, you could do that. No, as not well. about editing, but when I want to reuse the camera, let's say like two days later on, I don't want to like leave it on. Uh, no, you can then. I mean, it's on now. If we turn the camera off and put it back on again later, it will still be in that mode. If I don't want that in that mode, I just turn the mode dial along the top, let's say to aperture, or just press the intelligent auto button, and it'll go back to its uh, preset settings. See, that's why I love this kind of program, because usually you just see a camera, and to me it looks like a camera. But it takes someone like you who's telling me what you can do with it, when it uh, down to these, uh, to these special effects. I love them. It's a great feature. So really, thank you. really good feature. Thank you so much for that question, Gemma. This one is uh, dead right now, so maybe we have the chance just to switch. You've got that special new, oh, we've got a new, new yeah. tablet. Brilliant. You always need backup. I thought here. you were going to bring that white one, you know, the, yeah, we, we yeah, <laughs> the other one. Uh, Florian would like to know, is it a multi-touch screen? 
Yeah, um, the GF5, uh, also the LX7, uh, yep. your favorite as well. The LX7 comes with a touchscreen? Uh, sorry, not the LX7, oh, okay. the GF5, the G5, and uh, the GX1, the G3. We've got full edge-to-edge touchscreen. Okay. So there's no cropping, there's no, I can show you on here, if I just make sure I'm in the right uh, spot mode, which I am. Also, it's like a very unnatural okay. way of like uh, using the display right now. Yeah, it's it is. Standing but, next to but, it. But this really shows you how how good the focal point is. So I'm going to. Can you see that come into focus? Yes. Okay. So that is the showing you how responsive the sensor is, how fast it is, um, and now I can move that across. So look. But what is, I it can multi, do. is it multi? Is multi touch? And then again, what? I mean, can I pinch anything? Zoom. Oh, it? I see what you mean. No, no, you can't do that. Uh, you can, you can move uh, things around. So let's take a photograph. So you can slide with one finger, but yeah. you couldn't use like. So let's more take than a one. photograph here. Okay. If I now play back, uh, let's take another photograph over there. Okay. See how quickly that was taken. If I now go back to playback mode, what I can do is move the photograph across. Okay. And if I had multi multiple photographs. I could do that as well. So currently, right now, it's a no when it comes to multi-touch screen. You can't screen. do the pinching or anything like that. Okay. No. Sorry. Sorry about that, Florian. But anyway, this is your answer. Continuing with a uh, question coming from Ben Jones. This is a hot topic uh, concerning considering the lenses. Okay. This is yeah. a hot topic. Well, the lenses. We've uh, currently got 16 lenses behind us. And each lens does completely different things. So. Um, We've got entry, uh, sorry, a wide angle lens is at from seven millimeters to. What angle lenses you would use that for? Well, you'd use that for, let's say we were taking a photograph now of, and we wanted to get uh, uh, the ladies and gentlemen that are in front of us here and the televisions right over there. And we wouldn't have enough space just and we to didn't walk have enough far space. enough away yep. to have so both in one picture. A traditional normal lens, say, of. Uh, say 25 millimeter to 35 millimeter on a compact or even a digital SLR or a, or a mirrorless, we'd probably have, if we took that with a 25 mil lens, we'd have maybe the edge of the cabinet and some of the boxes. Right. Now, if you wanted to capture those people over there and the televisions, we'd normally have to move back. But with a wide angle lens of seven millimeters, we could, it, we could stay where we are and it would actually capture everything that you see here. So the wider the angle, the more you're going to get into the photograph. So if you've got lots of families and friends uh, out and about, uh, you've got a special event, or you just want to grab everybody into the picture, the wider the angle, obviously, you're going to get more in, into that. And that means just having an example of why you would need different lenses for. Yeah. What else is there to, to be said about them? I mean, there's also some new coming up. The pancake lenses were a big issue uh, l yeah, last year. You've got a fixed lens with the pancake lenses. So um, you've got over here. The just come over here. We've got uh, the 14 millimeter pancake lens. So we mentioned the seven millimeter there. Yep. So we're just moving a little bit ahead of the seven millimeter. This is a fixed lens, so it has has no zoom, um, but it has a really bright, uh, sharp lens. So what that basically is good for is portraits and landscape. But you, but you see, this is also like one of the things that, that I kind of witness. A lot of people always feel like they're getting less when they don't have more options, specifically when it comes to the zoom. Yeah. When a camera is not able to zoom, to them it's like uh, not a worthy camera in general. So where's the benefit of not being able to zoom in that well, case? Well, this is, this is the advantage of having a, uh, if you, uh, having a compact camera with a, say, let's say the TZ30, which has a 20 times optical zoom. Yeah. You can zoom into you know 20 times wherever you are. You can get very very close with a fixed lens attached, without having to worry about changing your lenses. So, but you are then limited to that because it won't go any further than say uh, 40 times uh, intelligently. Right. Um, that's the advantage of having interchangeable lenses. So, if you're shooting macro and only macro, then you'd want a lens that you can get very, very close up. A macro means those close-up shots. No, I see that's, that's the benefit of having different lenses. Yeah, but so then you can change it to, say, a pancake lens, which right. has uh, a wide angle, it's bright, so it lets a lot of lighting, 
But, it, but exactly that's the point why people would ask, why should I get like different lenses when I can have one which covers oh. all of it? As this year, for example, goes from yeah. 45 to 150 it's, million. It's even. down to the customer. It's down to what they're shooting and, and what their favorite subject matter is. Mm. So we have lenses for all different subjects, all different conditions, uh, uh, whether it's sport, whether it's leisure, or whether it's professional, and you're using things for magazines or websites or anything like that. So um, you know, we have one of the widest lens range in the marketplace. Place, uh, which is why, again, coming back to what we said earlier about mirrorless cameras, is that you have a huge choice of not just bodies, but also lenses as well. Oh, that's great, that's great. But okay, so some words about uh, the lenses. Thank you, Ben, for your question. Coming now to the next one from Steve L. Can you show what angles the LCD screen will work at on the G5? Mm -hmm. Does it go all the way around to, fa to face the front? Well, we need to go back over to the uh, to the booth, so uh, right. we're going to have to move a few people out of the oh, way. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Sorry, I'm going to do a demonstration. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, what's the name of this person? This was Steve, Steve L. Steve L. Steve L. So, Steve L. Yes, you got um, fully retractable here, so uh, you can see. Let's turn that back around. So, uh, and I can turn it right around there as well. Which is a great advantage when you are taking well, shots of yourself or for a video block, anything like that. Well, for certain examples, if you're a high crowd or even if you're low down. Oh, that wouldn't be a high crowd there. Well, for me it is. Okay, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying. And I'm standing on a box, but anyway. Um, <laughs> or down down here as well. So if you had, had uh, a lot of light behind you, for example, maybe, or um, you, you know, there were, there were lots of people, but you wanted to get a creative shot. Uh, you can actually uh, do that as well. So you've got it's it's a great thing to have, and you can also use it if you wanted just to have a little bit of extra stability with the camera as well. So oh, okay. uh, just to hold it. Yeah, so you could just hold it. That would make sense. So, Steve okay. Al, this has been your answer. Uh, this is yeah, that was your answer. Ilhan Gulay would like to know, low, uh, as a hot topic, low light performance. What can you say about that? I mean, it has been improved. Uh, to, the LX7 has been improved, aperture-wise. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just dependent on the, the amount of light that comes into but the lens. But also like the sensor. Well. The sensor as well. So the sensors have become more um, intelligent. They've become uh, less sensitive to light. So they're actually becoming more, uh, letting less. Uh, when you're taking a photograph, there's less grain or dots or. Uh, or pixelation or anything like that. So it's enabling the customer to have really sharp, bright um, photographs without A, the use of a, a flash, or when it's getting dark at night and you want to get that creative kind of atmospheric sunset or sunrise in the morning, then a camera with the, like the LX7, as you mentioned, would actually give you a really good, uh, a, you know, nice shot for that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So that's when it comes to low light performance. And uh, that was also the last question for this segment concerning uh, the Lumix. So thank you so much, Mark. Patrice, Once again, pleasure. Thank you. For an insight. Thank you very much. I definitely have to get an eye on that as a, uh, SD5. SZ5, yes. SZ5. Yes. Wireless. It's, it's, I love it. You did put it back, didn't you? I put it. Yeah, uh, okay, for a second, good, I was like, where good. is it? <laughs> but I don't have it on me, so I have no clue. Seriously, I swear, I don't have it on me. Um, we will see each, uh, each other again at uh, 4 o'clock when it comes to Viera. It's going to be all everything about swiping and sharing. So looking forward to see you then at 4 o'clock, of course, here, uh, live from the Panasonic booth. This was Patrice Buidibira. Merci. Danke.